Okay, this is going to be a big one. I apologize if you can hear my fan noise. I'm making this little MacBook work. We are going to make, we're going to animate this snake. So, so far, we've seen how animation works, but right now, in our interval calls, we're not doing anything except redrawing the board and drawing the snake, it, drawing the board and drawing the snake in the same place. So let's, let's see if we can move that snake. So in order to move, we're going to use the arrow keys. And uh, so that means uh, we're going to be able to handle events. So where do I handle these events? And, and you have to bear with me. This is you will run into a lot of this. Um, it takes a long time sometimes to figure out um, how things are done in programming. Uh, let's see, move. There we go. So, first, um, we are calling draw every time. I'm going to change this so that we call tick. Every, every, um, every second, we're going to call this function called tick, which is going to call draw. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's other things I want to do every tick rather than just draw. And one of the things I want to do before we do draw is I want to do a move. And that's going to be moving the snake. So either code, I'm going to find this. So I finally managed to get that right. Um, draw move. So here is our move function. So these are constants because they're not going to change. Once we grab them, we're not going to change them to something else. So we can just use them as we can just call them constants. We don't expect to get a different snake head while we're working on it or a different new X, new Y or new snake part. So what we're going to do to move is we're going to grab the head of the snake. We're going to find the direction that we're going. We're going to add that to the snake. So I remember I, I talked about that where we, our direction means we can just add uh, because right now direction is one. So direction.x is one and whatever our snake head x is at, we just add one to that and that'll move us to the right. And snake y, right now our direction y is zero. So if we add that, we're just not gonna be changing anything. That's the uh, identity with plus. You just get the same value if you add zero. So we'll have our new grid coordinate for x, our new grid coordinate for y, and then we'll create a new snake part where in the, those new coordinates. So we're not actually moving our snake's head, we're creating a new snake head in the new place. And so the snake head, I'm calling that, um, that's pretty traditional if you have in functional programming, if you have a list, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, you would call 0 the head, it's the first item in the list, and the rest of it you'd call the tail. So this is the head. So we take snake.parts. Now parts is an array, a list of things. And we're going to use an index into that to get the zeroth one in the array. And it always starts um, on the left. So this would be the indexes of these array values. The, the values are actually the same as their index. So if you call, if you index into that array using zero, you're going to get this zeroth value. If you index in one, you'll get one. In two, you'll get two. And actually, Here's a good time to let's play with that. And this is one of the reasons I'm using the browser is because we can go over to the browser into the console and we can do, uh, let's do var a for array equals zero, one, two, three, four. We'll create that array. Now we can just hit, we put a semicolon and right away the, the browser is very good. It'll tell you what that value is going to be even before I hit enter. Now you hit enter and it'll just say, okay, yeah, A is this array. The zeroth position is zero. The first position is one. Second position is two. Now I can say A sub zero and it'll say, oh, that value is zero. Or I can say A sub one, that value is one. So you're indexing into that array to get that the element at that position. So let's go back to our code. So we're saying get the zeroth position or the first one. Why do we start at zero and not one? That's um, that's goes back to the early days of programming. Uh, so we take our snake head X and our snake head Y. And notice I named it. I didn't just say I, I called it the head, so we can think about what this is. It's the head of the snake. And now we can say snake head X, snake head Y. Add the direction components to that, and then create a new part. This is creating a new object. 
with the x being the new x, the y being the new y, and then we unshift. Again, let's go back to our let's go back to our documentation. We can go back. Um, I off, often go to these MDN web docs. We can just search for MDN unshift. It'll probably take us right there. There we go. Array. And this is just a JavaScript peculiarity. It's a prototype-based language. So array, if you have an array, you'll have an unshift function, and here's how to call it. You say which element you want to unshift onto the array, and up here it tells you what it does. It adds one or more elements to the beginning of an array and returns the new length of the array. So if we call unshift with a new head, zero will actually be moved over and we'll have a new zero. So this zero will become one and we'll have a new one. Uh, let's just let's just play with it. This is one of the great things about doing JavaScript is you can just go into the console. So we have our A array. Let's do let's keep it consistent. So let's unshift five. So we do A. Let's actually capture what it is. Var we'll call it result equals A dot unshift. So we have this A array and we can call a function on the array called unshift and we're going to pass it five. So we're going to put five on the end of the array and the result will be the new length. So actually, before we do that, let's say what, let's get the length. We can say a dot length. And I don't think we need to, it's not a function, it's just a property. So we're not calling a function a list of instructions to get the length, it's just a, a, a field on that object is five. So the length is five, so we do a dot unshift five. And now we've uh, the length that it returned, this is the value it returned, is 6. So now a.length is now 6. And if we do a, we can see we've... Oh, we added it to the beginning. So I've screwed up my array. Now all the indices don't work. But unshift adds to the beginning. I think it's push adds to the end. So if we do a.push 7, and we do a, now we have 7 on the end and 5 at the beginning. So unshift puts something in the beginning. Push puts something on the end. Uh, there's push and pop for putting one on and taking one off the end of it. So if you're using like a like a, a stack and unshift and shift, uh, put them on the front. So uh, we are going to put a new stake part on the front. So now we'll see that in action. I think we're just going to call... Yeah, so every tick will move the snake. You don't have to hit your arrow keys to move it. The snake is going to move automatically. That's the game. You have, it's going to move no matter what you do. You've got to figure out how to use the arrow keys to get it from running into anything that's bad and get it to run into things that are good. So let's, um, uh, we're, every tick we're going to call move, and then we're going to come draw. So we'll, we'll update our snake, and then we'll draw the new snake. So let's switch over to this, and we'll run that. And we should see there's our snake moving now. Notice we, we didn't get rid of the old tail of the snake, so we just keep adding a new head onto the snake every time. So next video, we'll figure out how do we get rid of these old ones so that our snake, which is only one long until we eat something, is just one dot moving across the screen.